Okay, I'll call this meeting to order for August the 4th, 2020. <clears throat> Result of the agenda for the August 4th, 2020 regular meeting of council be approved. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by Councilor White. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. <clears throat> Number three, resolve that the minutes of the July 21st, 2020 regular council meeting, July 28, 2020 special meeting, and the July 28, 2020 committee of the whole be received and approved. Moved by Councilor Friesen, seconded by Councilor Delorier. All in favor? It's carried. <clears throat> Receptions and delegations. I now close this regular meeting. <clears throat> I call on uh, opening up the uh, conditional use uh, hearing for 2 2020. I call this hearing to order for conditional use application number 2 2020. The purpose of the hearing is to hear representation for or against the following conditional use application to allow the current and all subsequent pop property owners to retain existing horse boarding facility in a AUR agriculture urban reserve zone. Requirements of section 169 of the Planning Act have been adhered to. Are there any persons that would like to make representation to the hearing? Please state your name and civic address. I'm fine, I just being approved in question. <clears throat> okay, <clears throat> so upon hearing all persons present, I do adjourn this question. Pardon? Who has a question? Uh, he's not participating so <clears throat> I can maybe grant it then if you want. Councillor Deloria does want to ask you a question yeah. since you're here. No, that's what I came for. There okay. any questions right okay. available. <clears throat> Go ahead. So you, uh, you're requesting that the land become uh, be able to have horses on it basically in perpetuity. I, I would imagine so that's more appealing to sell in its current state as a, as a horse facility. Um, it would would it suffice to grant it for for one one subsequent owner? Um, again, we weren't doing it for the resale part of it. Like we did it originally when we were annexed into town. Like this is our confusing thing that when we were annexed into the town of Squaw River, we were supposed to be annexed in as agricultural land. Uh, when that was going through through your zoning. By all you, the town of Fort River does not have agricultural land as said agricultural land. Because if we'd have come in as ag land, we would have needed a conditional use. So that when history we were allowed to come in as a bar because you had a more land in there. Um, and I wasn't, I, again, I should have been aware, I wasn't aware that the original owner's issue was even in here because to me it's quite strange to put that it's only for one owner when horse boarding facility is a an approved conditional use in your own zoning bylaw so it doesn't matter who would be the owner of this property they would be able to apply for a conditional use and supposedly get it because there is no reason why it wouldn't approve something that's already been approved in the zoning bylaw. So again, I don't know, because when we did this and it showed up, I never thought we would be here trying to get another conditional use because it was originally in Jim and my name and in passing, we became now in violation of our conditional use. So, it could be anything, it could be now, because when we did it this time, this is now in uh, Carol's, Depp's, and my name. So again, it could be the same owners, just with one person off or another person on. So by putting the, you know, the limitation on or changing the ownership, it really doesn't do anything to what we do. Hope that answers your question. Council, <clears throat> I understand your position is that it's not for the purpose of resale? Again, doing this? No. Again, it could be. 
Uh, but right now we have to do something because of the full conditional we use. We are we don't have conditional use. And and would be your position if there was destruction of the barns so that they should be rebuilt? Pardon? If there was destruction of the facility, should it be able to be rebuilt? That's what perpetual conditional use permit would allow. Again, uh, because it's not a big part of what we do there, um, we'd really have to do something happen. It would really be something we'd have to decide on. But that's us as current owners. Again, uh, never know how long anybody's going to own anything. So again, to to do that, I, it's something that council's choice, I guess. But but it would still it would still be an approved conditional use in your own zoning bylaw. So to say that um, only one change of hands and then this conditional use isn't valid or uh, you can't build a different facility, it sort of goes against your own uh, approval of a boarding facility. Because technically if there was nothing on our property and we wanted to do a boarding facility, we should be able to apply and get a conditional use to build a brand new boarding facility. But by its nature, conditional use, you agree to that by its nature, conditional use isn't guaranteed. That's all. No, no. Okay. But it's a lot easier to get when it is a, an approved use of your zoning project. Any other question? <clears throat> Anything else? No? Okay. So upon a hearing all persons present, I adjourn the hearing. <clears throat> I reopen our regular meeting. 4.4. .4. Resolve that the application for conditional use number 2, 2020, to allow the current and all subsequent property owners to retain existing horse boarding facility and the AUR and culture urban reserve zone be approved. Moved by Councilor Friesen, seconded by Councilor Delorier. Discussion? Councilor Gray? I, I'm, I'm a little concerned uh, just because it's something that um, future council may or may not want to do. I, I certainly understand the concern and I'm actually surprise at the bring of the resolution that I saw passed because it clearly was not the intention that every time there was a change of ownership that it changed. That is that, uh, uh, who knows what will happen, but uh, let's assume that the current owners um, all pass and it's passed to a, a child. I would have thought that would have been an approved conditional use going forward no matter what. Um, and it, it would seem to me that uh, Cousin Gloria's comment that the next resale, um, that that would be sort of uh, conditional use would pass with that. But if, there, uh, if there's a destruction, I'm not sure that that would necessarily, and, and I agree with it, that the conditional use would likely be approved, but I'm not concerned, concerned that it would be. And it seems to be ill considered for conditional uses to tie the hands of future councils. So I, I'm a little concerned with perpetuity. I am not, I, I think that this application should be granted. It should be granted in a manner that would allow the passing within the family, within the direct family members, um, without um, obstruction and with the first sale outside of the family. That's my And that, uh, and obviously, if there's destruction, that needs to be reached. So does that mean that we're asking for a change in the wording? There's already motion, so I, I'm not moving away. I'm just saying that I, I have some difficulty with for those reasons. Okay. Is there any comments from administration on that at all? Correct me if I'm wrong, but just a typical conditional use is, uh, what do you call it? It, it's, it, it doesn't stop when you sell the property either way. So the, the, we could word this without the subsequent property owners. It's just a typical conditional use. The, the, mm -hmm. The hangar is the one in 2014 had a condition on it that it stopped as soon as it sells. So all we're doing is removing that condition. So the 
I did on the application state that it rented the property, so the can council was very clear that you know what is happening. But uh, it's not like we're making any special terms on this on this conditional use that it's going to be there to the end of time. It's a typical conditional use for this property to to uh, to allow the boarding of horses. It's just not going to have a con condition on it that it's going to end once the property sells. That's it. Okay. Well, I, I guess that would be the concern. I mean, I, I we're no, no risk, at least probably even in my generation, of seeing tremendous growth there. But maybe in 50, 80 years, no. I, I, guess, I, I guess we need to be cognizant of that as well. Yeah, and I, I acknowledge that the reason the condition was put on there is because at the time we were looking at you know, future development in that area, and that's why the, that's why the council decided in 2014 to put the condition on, but uh, just for your information. Go ahead. So I have two questions because I'm not quite totally clear with what, with what uh, we're going to be approving. Um, so we're saying right now that um, if Mr. Reich were to um, at some point, liquidate his property, sell his property. Um, the buyer who would buy the property, at, at w assuming that they could board horses, um, and then the second, if that person who bought it would ever want to sell, um, will not. The, few, the second buyer will not have the opportunity to board horses there. I think that. But they will. They will be able to. It stays with the property. It's not tied to the owners. Okay. So then the question is, or, or for me, we should have some set guidelines on on the just that use um, because going down three, it would be three purchases. How would how would somebody, why wouldn't somebody else be granted a conditional use for the same purpose in a different location to, to board horses? This is the whole so This is the whole purpose of this, of this conditional use application right now. And the right, terms so of this property in that zone is allowed to board horses under conditional use. It's not. It's. It's not like it's not permitted. It's also not simply permitted. They. They need council's approval. They need. To, and this is your choice to just let you know approve it, and it and it stays with the property, not the owner of the property, or council's opportunity to add conditions to the agreement. This is exactly the reason why they create a conditional use. Right, council Gray. But if we grant conditional use, it can never be changed by council. Is that right? I'm pretty sure it can be taken away. I'm, I'll look. I guess I'd have to research that and get back to you. But Mr. Go ahead. Um, what? How this could be in the town's protection <coughs> to be taken away is as if the property was rezoned. Then the conditional use does not meet the oh, current right. requirements. Because it's not 80 block. Right. So if there was a massive development, God help you, um, that the town needed that property, it is just a rezoning to your planning district to zone that as whatever you need, which then breaks the length of the conditional use. Councilor Delorier? I, I guess Mr. Reich is, is correct in that. The proper way to, you know, in 25, 50 years time, whatever, whoever the developer is developing that land, if, if it's a worthwhile development, it'll be no big deal to pay market value for what that's worth and get that rezoned. That's the way the process should work. So, uh, you know, I, I guess we had, we had no problem zoning it as AUR, and this is a, a, a suitable use of AUR in the AUR zone, pending any conditions we choose to put on. And besides the, the argument for future development, which we have an out, I, I haven't heard of any conditions to be put on. Okay, for the discussion. Okay. I'm sorry? Are we taking the word in perpetuity out and just 
putting it as conditional use? I don't think we can. The wording in perpetuity isn't in here. Not well, it never, it never was. Oh. I, I said that in my question to Mr. Reach. I'm not going to get there. Oh. See if that seems better. So, do you want me to read it again? <clears throat> Resolve the application for conditional use number two, 2020, to allow the existing horse boarding facility and the AUR Agriculture Urban Reserve Zone be approved. That was moved by Councilor Friesen and seconded by Councilor Delorier. Further discussion? Okay, Councilor Delorier. Um, I guess not specific to this condition use, but in the future, can we get the actual application included in our app, in our package? Just to, just to see what the... Sorry, yeah, okay. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. <clears throat> Moving on, receptions and, and petition. Oh, sorry, there's none of that. Communications. 6.1. Resolved that the letter from the Swan Valley Cheetahs Gymnastics Club be received as information. Moved by Councillor Friesen, seconded by Councillor White. You see the letter there from the Gymnastics Club asking for support for their new venture moving into an uh, organizer or a new uh, building Councilor Delorier. so <clears throat> the the facility they purchased will they uh be able to get it rezoned as institutional or or, or is that is that a commercial endeavor that they're particularly i guess right now because it is a commercial building that they would have bought it would be in the is there any way that they can lower their tax burden that way? Who's taking that? Okay. So, they, yeah, it's gone to the top of that title. So they have to go through that process to get it changed <coughs> from to school tax exempt. And then we'll have to go through the bylaw process to uh, exempt the property from the taxes. So this is just information right now. Right. There's nothing to be done, nothing. Just kind of they wanted that letter on there, but there's a whole process that has to be followed before that can all happen. Exactly. Councillor uh, Gray, did you have something before Councillor Delorier? Well, I'm trying to figure out why um, they would be exempt. Some organizations are. Ter uh, Mr. Gadita, can you answer that question as far as why some organizations may be exempt? Uh, my understanding is from the uh, registered nonprofit organization, then it can be reclassified from taxable to school tax exempt by assessment services. And once that is done, then a municipal council can um, pass a bylaw to exempt it also from general municipal taxes. Does that answer your question? Well, yeah, I, I knew what the pros had, but um, having had some history with the town of Swan River, I know that that has not been operated in some other cases and I'm wondering why as a policy some people would get it and some people wouldn't. That doesn't make sense. If we're going to make it that the case then we should make it for every not-for-profit or we should not make it for every not-for-profit. I don't know why we should pick winners and losers. I mean, not that I, I, I'm in favor of it right. but I'm, if we want to do it for every non-profit fair enough. I don't care but let's we should be consistent. Councillor Delorier. Well, my, my concern is similar to Councillor Gray's in the fact that uh, this is almost the first I've heard of exempting nonprofits. Can you can, can we get a report on how many are exempt? With what do we have any previous ones? Because I, I, I don't want to start something, or maybe maybe we do want to start something, but we should start something with a you know with not just one specific entity in mind. We have a lot of nonprofits in the community, so either like Councillor Gray says, we should. We should either have something that to have some criteria that needs to be met that we do this based on, not not just to do it willy nilly. We can defer some of this to our next call meeting, maybe. Councilor Gray. I don't think I, I, did, I was going to do. If we're going to do it, Cal, I can raise that. Of it. I'll go over my history with a couple of things. Okay. Yeah. Because that's that's I think that's going to be a fairly large con con conversation. 
conversation. But I have no problem doing it as long as we're consistent yeah. with everyone. Okay, further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 6.2. Result of the letter from AMM dated July 23rd, 2020, be received as information and a meeting date of September the 2nd, 2020, be confirmed. Moved by Councilor Morio, seconded by, is I pulling teeth here today? Yeah, uh, Councilor Delorier. Discussion. This is on. Uh, uh, We're not going to be required to cover this. No. Good. Uh, sorry, I, I missed that last we'll, we'll part of it. That's good. You guys are not. Well, that's the previous one. You're not going to be required. We're not required to attend this meeting. If, if you choose not to, you don't have to. But yeah, some members of council should be attending it. So if you don't, if you can't attend, then that's fine. I'm sure that we'll have enough representation to attend it. So okay, so we have that. Uh, any further discussion, Council Delorier? So will you, will you be replying to them that we can? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And the, the point also is that we make sure that we have enough space in the room for social distancing and so forth. So, okay. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. <clears throat> 6 6.3. Sorry. Refresh this. Result of the letter dated July 21st, 2020 from Pasico Harding Company, Chartered Professional Accountants, providing their supplementary report for the year ended December 31st, 2019, be received as information. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, second by Councillor White. Discussion? Why is it received for information in the natural document? Isn't it part of their audit opinion? It is. It's just a formality. It says right here that it's not. Uh... Yes, it's part of their audit, and they they missed uh, doing it uh, when they presented the financial statement. So it came later, and so that's why it's on the agenda now. Okay. Uh, further discussion. Um, just accept. Yeah. Oh, uh, Councillor Gray wants to change the um, resolution to include as accepted. I think that's acceptable. Received as accepted? Yeah, be received and be accepted. Okay. Further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. <clears throat> 6.4. Result of the building permits 5420 through 5920 with a total estimated value of $354,000 be received. Moved by. Councillor Gray, second by Councillor Friesen. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 6.5. Result of the 2019 Northwest Regional Library annual report be received as information. Moved by Councillor Delorier, seconded by Councillor White. Discussion? Anything there, Councillor Delorier? I can answer any questions anybody has, but. Uh... Other than that, I have nothing to add that isn't in the report. Okay. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 6.6. .6. Resolved that the email dated July 27, 2020 from the City of Brandon regarding the 2020 budget for E911 communications be received as information. Moved by Councillor Gray. Seconded by... You received. Cal you received. Uh, uh, seconded by Councillor Friesen. Um, this is uh, when uh, we had that latest charge last uh, meeting in regards to where our funding or where the funding was going and if there was any surplus. Councillor Gray. Can we defer this to the, the COW meeting? Because um, candidly, there is a surplus um, and then there's charges in there which contain surpluses. Okay. So we can receive it and then we can still have a discussion about it yeah. at the next COM meeting. Okay, all in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 6.7. 
result of the RCMP invoice for April to June 2020 and the 2020 and 21 financials be received as information. Moved by Councillor White, second by Deputy Mayor Wintoni. Discussion? Is it only being received in the resort? I'm going to act on it. How, how would you like to act on it, Councillor? Well, we pay the bill. Oh, yes, we'll have to pay the bill once. Okay, <clears throat> further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. <clears throat> 6.8. Result of the letter from STARS be received as information. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Delorier. Um, as you can see there from their letter, they, they often do these fundraisers and they're asking us, I guess, I'm not necessarily us for monies, but you know, getting the, the information out to the community. If there's any community support or anybody that would like to personally also uh, support the STARS. Further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 7.1. Result of the Director of Public Works report be received. Moved by Councillor Morio, second by Councillor Gray. Discussion? Questions or comments to Mr. Poole? Councilor Morio. Um, how is the Main Street uh, water sewer line place going? Good. We're going to have uh, uh, me and Patty, sit the CEO, talk about it today, having an advertisement <coughs> the public on the estimated uh, end date. So we should be done the infrastructure portions by the end of the next week, and then we'll do some drainage and sidewalk, just to basically clean up all that stuff away, probably the entire <coughs> Okay, so then it'll be all prepped ready for our temporary patching when yeah, that, that organization arrives later this year. But yes. Okay. Further discussion? Councilor Okay. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 7.3 Council and CO reports. I'll start with Councilor Wintoni. I have nothing to report this time around. Okay, thank you. Councillor Morio? Um, I've had no meetings that I attended in the last period, but uh, question, I, we have, have we heard from the Arm of Livingston that they said they would give us an uh, answer whether they were in or off by July 31st, and now we're August, so. I sent an email today. I just began to call up the phone call, but I have not received a uh, reply back to my email, so I will call it tomorrow. But did they say they would uh, give us a definite answer by July 31st and their scissors? Yeah, we sent the letter stating that. I didn't receive anything So what's our, how, how are we proceeding with that file? I would assume that if we didn't get a response from them by the deadline, then that means that the services are no longer there. Is that, am I wrong to say that? We have to take notice. So we'd have to take notice, of course, yes. But did we give them that notice and we just haven't? No, not officially. I believe that notice did go over. I'm pretty sure that notice went out, but we just drag it in. I would recommend we just give them a date and say as of this date. Like it, it is over, negotiations are over, this will end, and it will end on this date. Okay. So. Councillor Gray. So for that, I think the date should be January 31st, 2021. I know that we gave them notice and so on, but we've been in the middle of negotiations and in good faith that we should say, okay, we expected this, here's the deadline. The deadline was July 31st, you can meet it. Six months from then is January 31st, 2021. That's the end. Unless we come to an agreement in the meantime, we will stop providing service as of that date. Is the council in agreement with that? Mm -hmm. Councilor Morio? But isn't that the process we just went through? No. That we gave them six months notice. Councilor Gray? Oh, sorry. Because uh, yeah, that was, we gave them the six month notice and it was going to terminate unless we came to an agreement in the end. It wasn't going to be last time they were here. So 
my recollection, we, we did that exact process once already. Okay, but if that's the resolution, I, I don't know. That was what I remember. I remember the resolution saying that that was the case, and I thought we said, well, we're going to treat the same as every other partner, and if they want to contract with us, this is the formula. So that's my recollection. I could be wrong. I, I guess in just in good faith, you know, if we, because we went through the process, process kind of again, you know, uh, you know, I don't think there's any harm with, uh, you know, putting it at the 31st, but uh, making sure that we stick to that if there's nothing uh, further. I, I didn't mean the, oh, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. I didn't mean in the letter say, unless we come to another agreement, we're always free to come to another agreement. If they come back and say, okay, we agree, we'll pay you this amount of money, then they can come back to council. That's all. But, but I, I think that maybe with Councillor Memorial saying how long are we going to keep dangling the carrot out there, you know, we got to come, come to an end. Uh, come to a, a resolution, like we've been doing this for almost two years now, so. Councillor Delorier. The, the original uh, resolution was passed a year and a half ago, January 15, 2009, be it resolved, the House Marker provided Livingston with the required six months notice. We already given them the notice once, and then some. But because of what are we in agreement to extend it to the 31st of January? I, I say we're done. Like, send them a letter August 31st, we're done. You told us by an answer. Like they've been given notice and then some. They probably won't have alternate protection lined up by then. So. You know, you'd hate to see somebody I think not have protection. I think, that, I think that's the point of that, to have them prepare for that. So if we're okay with the 31st, then Councillor Morio or Councillor Gray? Uh, I don't know. Uh, that, that there is, at this point, I don't know that there's a motion that we have. So if there's a motion to be made, I, I'll make that motion and once we defeat it, then we we'll get it. I'll move that we give notice that as of January the 31st, 2021, that we cease providing service to the RM Limited. We be sent them a letter to that effect. Okay. So uh, can you add that to um, maybe 8.3? And just one. Go ahead. Just out of curiosity, why January 31st and on December 31st year end? Because uh, August 1st, 2020, maybe it was six months, January 31st, 2021. That's fine. And when we read the resolution, if there is someone that wants to make an amendment to December 31st, that's fine too. So, yeah. Okay, uh, Council Morio, you're still on. No, nope, that's all I've had. So. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councilor Friesen. Um, I didn't have any news either, um, but I just want to acknowledge everyone that has been involved with Communities in Bloom. We're not having any judges come this year, but if you look around town, I think everybody's stepping up to the plate. Flowers are great on Main Street. Um, people are looking after their yards really well, mainly because they're not going anywhere, so they're doing yards. And all of our community has. Uh, Done the park up nice, and uh, we've adopted out ten of the flower beds at the cemetery, and they are all doing really well too. So I would like to. Um, well, it doesn't have to go through you guys. I just want to put a thank you in the cable for everybody who's involved. I mean that. I'm good. Thanks. Okay, and make sure you extend uh, on behalf of all council in the town of Swan River to your committee for all the work they do because it, it does okay. look very good. And even though we don't have judges this year yeah. or, or that classification, um, it does look good. The park looks good. I've received lots of comments and everybody else doing their part. So yeah, you're right, it looks good. Thank you. Yeah. Councilor Gray. Other than the, the whole meeting, which is somebody else's going to summarize that with my intent and no other meetings, the settlement service is going to have an upcoming um, uh, ex outdoor event at the park again sometime in August. I'm not sure that we set a date. Um, and I do want to give kudos, uh, I don't know if you're aware, uh, it brought to my attention that I um, 
have some stuff cool about it. Uh, the sidewalks have been trimmed up all around town to avoid tripping zones. Uh, for our hundred, you said that they've done over hundred. Fantastic. Thing. It was being done Sunday, which caused some consternation. For those who don't know that I have my usual pipeline of information was being done Sunday, and there was a great deal of concern that we were paying somebody the whole time and a half. But I told that's not the case. It's a pure contract, and they did that on Sunday. So uh, kudos to uh, to the town, for, to the administration for doing that. That was fantastic. Very correct. Yeah, absolutely. I've seen actually a few of them already uh, yesterday. So yeah, it looks good. I think she had the opportunity to exchange at least four or five calls relative from the communities that care. I'm not sure what the acronym is regarding the people who were displaced when the uh, Conrad's apartment burned down. And they're asking us to, if we could help any way to do that. I've sent them back to social services saying, if you have a special request, please let us know. But at the moment, we think the, the government entity should be looking after that. But a lot of, a lot of, a handful of very concerned people uh, for people in, in need. Are you done? Yep, thank you. Okay, that's the shortest report you've ever had, I think. <clears throat> Councilor Delorier. Uh, last Tuesday had the Cal meeting, which you all attended. So, um, and then on Wednesday, uh, we went out to Minotaurus Bozeman to discuss the uh, collaborating with them on the CT scanner. And I heard through the grapevine that it looks like uh, they're gonna go forward with that. I think they're gonna be, should be passing the resolutions as we speak. So um, I think the next step then would be if uh, administration could draft a, uh, a, a letter to send to the foundation or with regard to the second resolution requesting the 300,000. And then we, we can either all send it jointly as four municipalities, one letter, or they can all send their own, with, with whichever way I can, probably doesn't matter. But uh, if you can draft a letter, we'll get that sent off. That's it from our report. Okay, thank you. And then basically it's been quiet in the last two weeks, and I repeat, uh, same as what Councilor Delorier, but then going to the meeting with Minnetonas Bozeman last week, I thought that was very well received and uh, we have, um, uh, they asked a lot of questions and, and they're all deserving and uh, I believe that it's either tonight or tomorrow night that they're going to look at uh, passing that. So if they do or when they do, um, we can move forward with lobbying a little bit more with the province and getting our ducks in a row and, and also lobbying um, the foundation as well, like you said, and uh, other groups as well. So it's good. It's a good sign anyways to get this CT scan and move along. Okay, see you home. Um, yeah, I've just been busy in the office. Tax notices have been ordered, um, so we'll be here shortly. And those will be going out by the end of the month as planned. Um, the bylaw office is settling in. He's getting caught up on all of the um, bylaw notices that need to get sent out. And he started parking controls here this week, so that. Um, the ice plant got turned on last week, so we're in the process of uh, working to get the ice put in uh, last schedule for the end of August. Uh, I'm just waiting on a um, timeline for the table repairs and then we'll be able to set a date on, on that. <coughs> no, no clear idea when that might be with the wellness end of it? Uh, just to have the timeline uh, by the end of the week. Okay. With the bylaw officer, I'll tell you that I've been hearing lots of different things about him. He's doing his job, sounds like, because there's some people are happy and some people are not so happy, but uh, that's all comes hand in hand with being a bylaw officer. So, Councilor Delorier. Just a question on your comment on the bylaw officer. Can you, for next Cal meeting, can you give us a, just a short report? Don't put, spend much time, but just on the process of, of what our process is for or what are bylaw states for uh, long grass and like how much notice, what the timelines are, how, how that well, all works from your guys' end. Yeah. And I, I'd like to have a discussion around that. Councilor Delorier. Uh, 
comes from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can tell you it's two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> two weeks? <laughs> yes, I can tell you it's a game. It's two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> that was the problem. Depending on rain, but it could be two weeks. <laughs> it's two weeks, and then the 29th, they're sending somebody in to cut it. <laughs> I, I, I think there's an actual right. measurement in there, but exactly. two weeks might be the time for it to reach that measurement. And, so. and, oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. No, no, two weeks from the day they gave me the notice. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah. Right. And so that's all I hear about. Okay. And I, as I said last time, I thought that was fantastic. Right. It's exactly what the court is supposed to do. Exactly. Okay, good. Moving on, 8. 8.1. Result of the town of Swan River is devoted to improving the Swan River Valley and ensuring its future success. Be it for the result that the town of Swan River hereby supports the Swan Valley Business Consortium Subcommittee Swan Valley Community Safety Partnership requests of support and encourage the success of their venture on a conceptual basis. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Deputy Mayor White Tony. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. <coughs> Eight point two, whereas sections three sixty five two of the municipal act provides that council may in any year designate the immediately preceding year or any earlier year as the year for which property properties the taxes in respect of which are in arrears for the year must be offered for sale by auction to recover the tax arrears and costs and whereas council result and whereas council resolved that in its regular meeting April 21st, 2020, to place proceedings to offer properties for tax sale, tax, sorry, sale and tax auction on hold as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. And whereas the tax sale manager has advised that the suspension of tax sale auctions by the province of Manitoba is set to expire on September 21st, 2020, and council can set the date of tax sale auction no earlier than November 16, 2020. Be it resolved that the 2020 tax sale be held Wednesday, November the 18th, 2020 at 2 p.m. in the Town of Swan River Council Chambers. Moved by Councillor Gray, second by Deputy Mayor Wintoni. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. <clears throat> 8.3. Resolve that notice be given to Arm of Livingston to cancel the fire protection agreement effective January 31st, 2021. Moved by Councillor Gray, seconded by Councillor White. Discussion? Councillor Morio? I think that's more generous. I, would, I personally would change a much shorter date. Are you asking for an amendment? Sure, we have an amendment for September. <coughs> September? September 30th. Okay. Uh, who moved that again? Councillor? I did. He's moving an amendment, so that yeah. now we need to second. Right, okay. So I'll second. Second that, okay. All in favor of the amendment? Okay, so the amendment will be September the 30th, 2020. So the amendment passes, and the main motion now. Great, I'll have to reread re the motion after. I guess I can put that in there. Result that the notice be given to the RMO Livingston to cancel the fire protection agreement effective September 30th, 2020. Moved by. Well, it's all right. Oh, right. I'm sorry. It was Councillor Gray, Councillor White. Any further discussion? Councillor Delorier. This note, the notice to them will be sent out immediately. Then, like tomorrow. Then. Okay. Tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. Further discussion. All in favor. Councilor. No, I was just worried that they. I wanted to make sure they got some kind of coverage before we just cut them off. I don't know how we can do that, but that's just my concern. They had 18 months. Yeah. yeah. There's been I a long time. Will they do it? It's their problem, I know, but. Okay, so I'll ask the question much. again. All in favor? Raise your hands again. Opposed? Okay, it's carried. <clears throat> 
number 10. Result of the accounts as follows be hereby approved for payment. General accounts checks number 26439 to 26500 for a total of $155,707.81. Check number 2641 was voided due to incorrect amount and replaced by check number 26496. Payroll accounts checks number 4701 to 4706 for a total of $95,402.99 and direct deposits totaling $750. Moved by Councillor Gray, seconded by Councillor Morio. Discussion? Councillor Morio. Um, for Mr. Poole, I uh, guess check number 26441 to cement works uh, for the capital pad. And that's, that's just passed put underneath the, the, the back hole so it doesn't wreck the asphalt. Is that what those things are? I don't believe so. I think those are uh, for our hydrogen stalls. We need pressure blocks. Okay. That's all I got. Okay. Further discussion? Uh, uh, with Deputy Mayor Antonio. <coughs> Mr. Poole, check number 264464 one tree. What is that about? Uh, that. That was a deal that I made with the resident, basically, uh, I have to remember that it was last year. Uh, the tree finally got moved this year, but uh, I, she took down one of the town trees uh, due to, a, it, there, was a, there was a hazard, it was hanging over the sidewalks quite dangerously, and, and she already had some tree trimming going on, and I was there, and she, the contractor to just do it. And just, and I was telling her that we were going to remove it either way, but uh, basically she took some of our responsibility on herself if, if I was to give her a tree of our nursery, and I accepted it. Okay. Any discussion for the discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Nothing for 11 or 12. I do not think that we have anything for camera. Unless anybody here wants to add something for a camera session, but I don't think that we had anything to add for camera. <coughs> Councilor Delorier? I don't have any. Okay. No good news anyway. It's besides in the email that you guys all received. Unless. Okay. Um, Councilor Gray? I, I'd like to talk about the effect of camera on that apartment. If you don't mind, but I would like to do that Okay, so that would be um, property issues. Okay, so result of pursuance of sections 152 4 of the municipal act. This meeting be oh, sorry, result of pursuance of sections 152 4 of the municipal act. This meeting be closed to the public uh, due to uh, enforcement. enforcement issues. There you go. Moved by. Councilor White, seconded by Councilor Friesen. All in favor? It's carried. Okay, Councilor Gray, you had a no, yes, no, 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 no. You're bad. Resolved that this regular meeting of council now be adjourned. Moved by Councilor Friesen, seconded by Councilor Morio. Oh, you're going to do that. All in favor? It's carried. We're adjourned. Thank you.